Hi, I'm Tony DiCicco, director of the NSCA Goalkeeping Academy, I want, and I want to talk a bit about integrating your goalkeeper into the team training. The modern goalkeeper is not just a player that stands between the post and makes saves. We saw in the World Cup, Manuel Neuer and other goalkeepers actually serve as another defender in addition to being a goalkeeper. It's vital that coaches now integrate their goalkeeper into their team training. At the NSCA Goalkeeper Academy, we train goalkeepers with these methodologies. Coach, goalkeeper, meaning kind of one-on-one -on -one with your goalkeeper, you know, goalkeepers if you have two, three, or four goalkeepers on your team. Coach, goalkeeper, and players. You bring in two, three, six players, and you create an environment that trains your goalkeeper. Uh, you use players get the extra work, but you're training your goalkeeper, utilizing your team players. And then most importantly, coach, goalkeeper, and team. You use your whole team to train your goalkeeper. How do we integrate goalkeepers into our training? Start with warm-ups. It's often when I was coaching our women's national team, we'd come out to training and I'd say to our three goalkeepers, okay, each of you get six players, you've got 10 minutes, I want you to do some dynamic warm-up. I want you to get some ball work in to initiate the warm-up. Be a leader, take charge. Immediately, the goalkeeper has to take charge. They grab a bunch of players. And don't we want that of our goalkeepers during games, for them to take charge, for them to be leaders? We've got to create that environment for them in practice. Use warm-ups and incorporate your goalkeeper. A couple of warm-ups I use is possession game. Use your two or three goalkeepers as plus players. If teammates play to their feet, they have to play with their feet. And you're trying to get, whatever, six or eight passes to score a goal. I also put in a little restriction that if a teammate lifts the ball or plays the ball into the goalkeeper's hands, then they can play with their hands, and now the goalkeeper is um, using some hand distribution. So that's one game that's easy to play, incorporates the goalkeeper, kind of makes them the focus of the warm-up. Another one you could play is you create two teams, you have your two goalkeepers, and the way you, a team A scores is by getting the ball to goalkeeper A, their goalkeeper. Team B scores by getting the ball to their goalkeeper. All of a sudden now, uh, balls are flighted in like crosses, goalkeepers have to kind of go above the challenge to win them. Um, and you've got to warm up. Again, the focus is the goalkeeper. Um, but use team games. We all play as head coaches. Uh, we all play games that can be great games for outfield players. But you can turn that in to a goalkeeper training exercise. How do you do it? It's simple. You just walk over to the goal. It, say you're playing uh, 6v6 plus 2 or whatever it might be. You walk over to the goal and say, okay, this I want to focus on your distribution, I want to focus on your communication, and I want to see if you can start counterattacks every time you get the ball. All of a sudden, that's become a goalkeeper training exercise. What's the difference? Well, you've changed your position from the middle of the field to the goal mouth, probably the side of the, side of the goal. Now you're speaking to your goalkeeper. The goalkeeper knows this is a goalkeeper training game. The outfield players, they don't know any different, and they don't really want to be coached. Let them play, focus on the goalkeeper. That's just one simple one. There's a number of games that we play. One of my favorite shooting games when I coached uh, the women's national team was an 8v8 shooting game where you had four players. The field size was 36 yards long. Let me just show you over here. You use your regular goal, and then you create another penalty area built on the other one and you just put another big goal right here. It's always nice if there's a mark for the six so that goalkeeper knows. And this is the common 18 for both, um, for both teams. You've got four players in the game playing against four players. And now you've got a player in each zone from each team. They're not competing on the outsides. So the X's, X's are going in this direction. So when this player has played the ball, it, they can dribble in and challenge the goalkeeper. 
They can lay balls off. It's a shooting game. But the goalkeeper now, if you want to turn it into a goalkeeper focused exercise, change your position on the field. Instead of being somewhere out in the midfield, come down by the goal, give the goalkeeper two or three objectives of the exercise. Maybe dealing with flank play as players attack the goal line, or maybe crosses, because there's going to be crosses from these players, or maybe just preventing rebounds, communication, distribution. There's a lot of things you can pick based on what your goalkeeper needs. The outfield players have played this game a number of times, but now you've got a goalkeeper at each end, and the focus becomes theirs. You um, start here as the coach, and maybe when they get a break, and obviously you're moving players in and out in a couple minutes, inside out, outside in, um, and now you move your position to the other side and work with the other goalkeeper. Any game that you can play with your outfield players in this sort of setting, you can turn into a goalkeeper training game. You are now integrating your goalkeeper into the training using your team. This is where the next level of coaching our goalkeeper has to come. Rather than sending your goalkeeper down to this goal here where they're working uh, with just the other two or three goalkeepers or even with a goalkeeper coach, that's important. As I said, the methodology of working coach, goalkeeper, that is important because it's one-on-one. -on -one. You can break things down. You can see where the triggers are for your goalkeeper. But this is critical. For your goalkeeper to be a leader, for your goalkeeper to really integrate with the team, uh, to, you know, create counterattacks uh, as soon as they win a ball, to organize defenders so they see less shots. Um, that has to happen in these types of environments. There's a number of games you can play over a 36-yard field, or you can play over a you know, 60-yard field instead of trying to play 11 versus 11. So take the challenge. Um, you know, make sure you do an NSCAA Goalkeeper Academy course. We have level one, level two, level three, and then our advanced national goalkeeper diploma course is a week-long 50-hour course. But there's countless games that we uh, introduce, and we probably will learn some games from you if you come to our course. I think in the next Soccer Journal, I'm, uh, this topic is something that I've sent to our editor, Jay Martin, and you're, you'll see a bunch of games. It's part one of two-part integrating your goalkeeper article. For more information on the NSCA Goalkeeper Academy, go to www.nscaa.com. Thank you and good luck with your coaching.